Good morning, this is Stephen with Iowa Backyard Farmer. We've got Jennifer swinging the camera today. I just wanted to give you a quick update. It's been five weeks since we last posted a, a video and that particular video we called Tomato Tragedy and we outlined what we had seen in our all of our tomato greenhouses, which was that we had been hit by dandelion spray. So I wanted to give you a, an update on what has gone on since then. So immediately after we posted that video, we started to receive emails from customers who had already put in orders. And those emails ranged from please cancel everything, uh, which is a little heartbreaking because in many cases they'd only ordered a couple of tomato plants, but it was understandable. Uh, and then other emails were please don't throw mine away, I still want to take them anyway. And so we used those two extremes as we communicated to our customers uh, what their options were. And some other people did fully cancel their orders, but a, a vast majority wanted to come and take a look. Uh, recognizing that we have varieties that can't be found anywhere else. And quite honestly, the plants are big enough that uh, many felt that if they had to go buy other tomato plants and ours were a little stunted, uh, they'd still come out ahead by getting our bigger tomato plants than going anywhere else. So a lot of people came. Uh, we showed examples of what to look for, what we were looking for and what we would plant in our garden, what we would not plant in our garden. And many people did end up taking their plants to, to give them a try. Um, a, a few have come back and have asked for refunds and that's just fine. And we want people to be happy with their plants. But the biggest, uh, I say, aha moment for most of our customers was that most of them had seen that type of, type of damage before. Uh, many commented that they had done, you know, done their own spraying and had, had, had you know, impacted their own plants. Some pointed out their husbands or their boyfriends or their neighbors. But as a whole, I feel like we have a much better informed customer base now uh, because we did try to teach everybody what, what the, the situation was. So <clears throat> I kind of want to cover the most frequently asked questions that came out of, of this. So the first question that so many people ask as well, or you know, asked or commented was about the financial impact. Overall, it was about a $30,000 loss in, in sales to us. You know, by comparison, uh, we only sold 35,000 gross last year. We were hoping for some growth this year, but uh, compared to where we were, we were uh, on target to meet, about a $30,000 loss. Now that, that doesn't include future loss customers. That doesn't count the impact. We had to let a, a test garden plot go because um, we no longer had plants to put into it. But uh, as a whole, looking around $30,000 loss. Our next big question that we received is, you know, do we have the option to recover some of that, that loss? And uh, the quick answer is no, not really. We did file a report with the Iowa Department of Agriculture. They have a pesticide division that comes out and investigates these types of issues. And when, they, when the investigator came to the door, you know, he introduced himself and his very first comment was, there is no state fund to try and reimburse you for any of this. Um, the best you can do is use the results in a civil lawsuit. And I'll be honest, my desire to be involved with a civil lawsuit over this on a scale of one to 10 is about a negative three. So, so there, there really isn't any other options. So we'll just, we've got to live with it and uh, hope this kind of stuff doesn't happen again in the future. Um, the next question is, what do your impacted tomatoes look like? So we did have to plant some of ours for, you know, number one, we wanted to see how they would recover. Did they not recover? Wanted to get an idea of what our customers were going to deal with. And number two, we still try, we we're trying to trial a number of varieties and we couldn't get them anywhere else. So let's take a look. Uh, we we kind of categorized our, our individual plants into the, we would plant it in our garden anyway, versus that we wouldn't plant it into our garden. But there's there's three or four of those that we said we wouldn't plant in our garden that we had to put in. Let's take a look at those and see what they look like now. So the first one we'll take a look at is Giant Crimson. And this is one of the, uh, the MI Gardener recovery um, varieties that's really, really old and we knew we couldn't get the seeds anywhere else or the, the plants anywhere else. So. If we take a look overall, I mean, the plant has certainly grown. There are certainly a lot of flowers on it. Let's, we'll have to wait a little bit longer and see if the flowers actually pollinate. Um, but overall, the plant is looking okay. But if we come over on this side, we can still see what, what some of the original impacted leaves look like. They're still there. 
But if we look at the sucker, so coming from that same node, what does the sucker look like? The sucker leaves look pretty good. So overall, I'm, I'm pleased with this plant. Again, this is one that we, we said we did not want to plant in our garden. We wouldn't recommend it for anybody else, but it's looking okay now. Let's come take a look at some of the others. So where is got a little signs here? Sun sugar. Let's come look at sun sugar. So sun sugar, I mean, it's almost my height now. This is another one where you can see the original leaves and pretty well impacted, but this coming from the same node, the sucker looks much, much better. And if you look around, there are a lot of flowers on this one. Uh, we do see, if you come around to the backside over here, we do see that there are some that are taking. So pretty optimistic about this one as well. And let's see what else. Let's go look at the super sauce. Super sauce was one that I almost wondered if it was impacted twice. It uh, it was one that we we did our best to try to substitute out because um, you know we did not feel very good about that one at all. And we can still see again a lot of the original damage is still there. But if we just step back and look at the plant as a whole, you know great big trusses of flowers hopefully those will will pollinate and take but uh considering this was one i really did not uh, you know would not have recommended anybody plant seems to be doing okay so overall for the things that we were able to get into the ground uh they're looking better than i anticipated so consider that good news uh, i did mention that we had to go um you know with the loss of so many of our varieties, we ended up going to a couple of stores to try to, to get some replacements. Um, just for example, over here's a variety, Supremo. It, uh, it basically lost all of its leaves. And I thought, well, we're gonna have to replace that. We don't wanna lose that spot in the garden. So we went last weekend and bought several other plants. And uh, then this one ended up throwing on a whole bunch of new leaves over this week. Let's go look and see what the replacement plants would have looked like. So I'll just grab, grab one as an example. So finding the best replacement plants that we could find, this is what they look like at this point. So we've not gone and bought tomato plants from a big box store uh, until this year. It's been several years since we've had to do that. And it's uh, very eye-opening to see the, the difference between the plants that we, we are providing and the ones that you can buy in the store. And we had to pick through to find some that we felt looked pretty decent but I can definitely see why our customers wanted to take plants even if some of them were impacted. So the, the last question I wanted to address is just, what are we gonna do next year? Uh, you know, how do we move ahead and not be impacted? Uh, good question, we'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, we know that dandelion sprays can move for miles. It can pick up and move three or four days after it's been applied. So there's not a real good, easy answer for us, but uh, <laughs> the, the emotional impact is pretty pretty challenging and so you know on any given day we range from we're never going to do this again we should sell everything and move to a town home to well you know we survived this year maybe we can do it again but uh hope to not have to deal with this kind of a, a loss that, that, that part's still been pretty tough so i'm curious what you would do what you would recommend for us please put those down in the comments but uh thank you for watching and hope you have a good one Bye bye